grown-ups. I just wanted to take a minute to make a video just for you to kind of explain a little bit about why we do what we do with the Play-Doh and the Play-Doh song. Um, I am not an occupational therapist. I am just a teacher, but I've had both of my boys do a little bit of occupational therapy and I've picked up on some things over the years as I've watched things that that kids do in school. And I made up the song, the Play-Doh song, um, a little while ago as we were kind of helping our kids at the end of small group one day. It was a particularly crazy small group and they were a little out of control. So we just wanted a way to get them all doing the same thing with Play-Doh and help them just calm down a little bit. And I came up with a Play-Doh song. So when we do the Play-Doh song, the first thing we do is roll our Play-Doh in a line. And you might think that that, or roll the Play-Doh in a snake. You might think that that's kind of a, an easy skill to do, but it's actually really important because um, it gives a lot of good sensory input because kids have to figure out they can't push the Play-Doh too hard because then it won't work and they can't roll the Play-Doh too softly because it won't do anything, it won't make any difference. So they have to figure out just the right amount of pressure um, to put on the Play-Doh so that they get a nice smooth snake. And in teaching and in science and whatever, there's this big long world word called proprioception that basically just talks about where your body is in space. So it's how much pressure is on your body, how much pressure you're putting on things, um, what, your, what your skin is touching, what your body is feeling in space is proprioception. So when we have our kids roll our Play-Doh in a snake, they're getting great proprioceptive input and they are getting um, some really good sensory feelings about just exactly how much pressure to put on something. It's also helping them strengthen the muscles in their hands and wrist and arm, shoulder, um, if their bodies are kind of moving back and forth a little bit, side to side, it's helping them develop their core strength in their, in their tummy and in their back. Um, and so what seems like a really simple activity is actually really important for kids as they're little. The second thing that we do is pinch the Play-Doh in a line. And when you're having your child do this, you want to watch for this pincher grasp, which a lot of kids develop around the time that they're about six months old as they are learning to pick up individual Cheerios or puff cereal or raisins or little tiny pieces of food and put them in their mouth. But you want to watch for the index finger and the thumb to be going together in that good pincher grasp. And once your child has developed that all the, you know, down the Play-Doh, you can then alternate fingers. You can have them go back and forth, you know, pinky, start it with the pinky and go back and forth to the index finger. Um, that helps to strengthen the individual fingers in their hand and helps with just finger coordination, hand-eye coordination and things like that. Um, it's also strengthening the muscles in their hands, arms, that kind of thing. If you pinch and feel with your other hand, you can actually feel the muscles in your hand moving and that will give you an idea kind of what muscles we're strengthening as we pinch the Play-Doh in a line. The next thing we do is poke the Play-Doh in a line and that is also just another strengthening um, exercise that we do. The kids don't realize that we're working their muscles when we do these things, but they actually some of the kids actually switch hands from their dominant hand to their less dominant hand because their, their hand actually gets a little bit fatigued. So you as their grown-up can encourage them to start with their dominant hand, the hand that they write with, and keep using that hand even if they're getting tired because it's really important to continue to strengthen the muscles even if they get, even if they get tired. Um, after we poke the Play-Doh, then we're going to roll it in a ball. And this is another great sensory input, another great proprioceptive input um, part of our Play-Doh play, where they get to have just the right play, just the right pressure. Um, it's also an activity that helps them do what's called cross the midline. And if you imagine a line straight down the middle of your body from the top of your head all the way down through your belly button to your toes, that's what we call the midline of your body. And it's really important that kids learn to 
be able to cross that midline from the right side of their body to the left side of their body. So your right arm needs to move over to the left side of your body. Your left arm needs to move over to the left side or right side of your body. And the same thing with your feet also. And when we roll our Play-Doh in the ball, if you look, my hand is going over my midline of my body to, um, to help to help, um, the crossing the midline is really important because that actually helps to integrate the two halves of your brain so that the right side of your brain talks to the left side of your brain more efficiently and, and more effectively. So it's good for proprioception, it's good for sensory input, and it's also good for crossing the midline so that your brain can really work hard to talk to each side effectively. Um, the squishing the Play-Doh, just sounds like a lot of fun and it is a lot of fun but it's also great sensory input they're getting proprioceptive input as they are squeezing they're getting um, the squeezing also is a calming um, also has a calming effect so if your kids are you know feeling a little anxious or a little frustrated or out of control as we all <laughs> tend to be these days get a little play-doh and have them just squish it because it's really calming and really soothing and it's also helping them to build up the muscles in their hands their fingers their wrist their forearm i mean when you squeeze the play-doh in a ball you can feel your forearm muscles working and it's just a really good um, really good activity for kids to use. Once you're finished with their dominant hand, go ahead and switch to their non-dominant hand. And if they do tend to, if they do tend to switch between one side to the other, maybe sit next to your child and hold on to the hand that they're not, you know, that you don't want them to be using necessarily so that they can concentrate on just one hand at a time because we want to make sure that we are using both sides of their body which also engages both sides of their brain. If you have any other questions about any of this, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of your child's teachers. Um, we are here, we're trying to support you in whatever way that we can. We want to encourage you, you guys are doing great work. This is a really strange, really hard time for all of us and we are we're here to help you and support you in any way that you can. So you can guys can reach out by dojo or email to any one of your kids' teachers. Thanks. Have a good day.